But uh, if you could just tell us your name and your background. I'm Turd Ferguson, and I am the uh, owner, editor, publisher, all that stuff of tfmetalsreport.com. And from your experience, from your knowledge, what do you think is the most important piece of information that the American public is not being told about? I don't think people realize that this isn't over. I mean, the, you had this terrible financial crisis that almost took down the whole financial system five years ago, but yet their government wants them to think that, oh, it's all been papered over, it's all been fixed, everything's hunky-dory. It's not. It's not. It, there's been a band-aid put on it. They've been able to adjust the balance sheets of the big banks to make it look like everything's just fine, but it's not. It's still going to unravel at some point in the future, and you have to be preparing now for when it does actually happen. Yeah. So the bailouts didn't work? They work to the extent that the I guess we still have a financial system that functions. We can walk across the street to the ATM and get some cash out. Uh, but in terms of a long-term solution, absolutely not. It was just throwing money at it to, to keep legs under the stool. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen next? What's the next step of this whole process? Well, at some point, you, can't, you just simply can't keep issuing paper money to pay your bills and keep leveraging things higher and higher. The hard part is not knowing when exactly it'll fall apart. We'll know in hindsight what happened, but predicting and saying that's going to happen a week from Wednesday is, is next to impossible. And so what people need to be doing is they need to recognize that this is still an ongoing event and that bad things are still going to happen and they need to utilize this time. to. It's like when, when the Hurricane Center says a hurricane is coming, you can sit there and there's always those people that I'm not going to get in traffic, I'm not going to board up my windows and then like with six hours to go, they're, you know, Home Depot's cleared out and all that kind of jazz. Yeah. People need to use this time to prepare themselves for what is definitely coming and it's going to be a pretty bad storm. Yeah. How do you recommend people prepare themselves? What actions should they take? Well from a financial standpoint the only thing that will have any value that you know for certain is physical metal, physical gold and physical silver. Gold protects your wealth that you've accumulated all these years. Silver protects your ability to have purchasing power, to, to, to barter for everyday things if it comes to that. Yeah. Outside of that, you need to be prepared for your family. I mean, you need to be, if we're standing here in New York City, a, a war could start again anytime in a week. You have to be prepared to what they call shelter in place. That doesn't mean you need to have a year's worth of canned goods in your basement. But if a time ever comes that you need to stay home for a few days, you want to make sure that you can do that. So it, it's preparing financially through the acquisition of sound money, gold and silver, but preparing materially as well through the acquisition of you know all your daily needs, water, you know, water filters, things like that, just so that you're prepared for what may not come tomorrow, but is definitely coming someday. With this brewing storm, what is the factor? What is what is the biggest recipe in this that is most concerning to you? The well, eventually, the you, the American system, the way we have run and dominated the world for the last 60, 65 years is going to end. Most, anybody walking around the streets here of New York, all they know is the America that you and I have known, where the America is the world's economic and military superpower. That is a transitory, temporary thing. It's not a permanent thing. And so that's going to be the biggest shock for everybody. When all of a sudden, food prices skyrocket, the value of their investments plummets that type of thing. That's what's really going to be a big shock for folks as we transition into this new economic world. How do you think about this new war in Syria? How do you think it will affect the dollar and how do you think it will affect uh, things like silver and gold? It may very well drive, the, it has driven the dollar higher. It may continue to drive the dollar higher, which is not really an indication of how great the dollar is. It's just simply that has always been kind of a safe haven investment. People aren't taking their dollars and buying anything. Stock market's not going up. The bond market's going down. They just want dollars. And in the, in the end, that might flow one way or the other. It will have a material impact on silver and gold. I mean, not so much maybe today or as people are watching this, but it does create additional demand for people that want sound money. And as that works its way through the system, that's all reflected in higher prices in the end. Anything else you'd like to say or, or get into? I just hope people utilize this time to prepare. You've been, you know, 2008 caught everybody by surprise. No question about it. Got me by surprise. I mean, you knew this was coming, but gosh, you didn't know that you were going to wake up one day and all the banks were collapsing and the stock market would be down to 1,000 points and that kind of thing. But now your government has tried to convince you that everything's fine and it's not. So use this time. This is a gift that you've been given. Use this time to be ready for when it gets pretty nasty again, and that's coming pretty soon.
you did you did tell me the Federal Reserve is the most insidious organization you work for, and I was wondering if you could explain that. The Council on Foreign Relations Trilateral Commission want to destroy American sovereignty. I'm a member of the Trilateral Commission. That's correct. I'm a member of the Federal Reserve, which is the most insidious. Paulson, why did you threaten martial law to Congress and Senate, sir? Sir, you threatened martial law with Congress and the Senate. Please don't touch me. Sir, can you answer that question, please?